Thank you for joining me today for this reflection. I, I actually, I just got finished recording my sermon uh, for tomorrow. And uh, this, pop, this has been on my brain since I seen it on, on Twitter the other day. My name is Ed Travers. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia, in the awesome parish of Christ Church Shelburne that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And I want to tell you that for the last few weeks, YouTube's been sort of blowing up a little bit for me, in, in, at least as far as I'm concerned. And I am giving thanks for all of you who are watching this every single day. I pray nothing but wonderful things in all of your lives. And again, thank you for joining me. Okay, so um, you all know I'm a father. I have four kids. My oldest son is in university. My oldest daughter is training to be a paramedic. Uh, I have a, uh, a nine-year-old, make sure she's, she's nine years old, uh, who's in, in, in elementary school. And my son, my youngest son, who's, who's five, he'll be six in January, who's also in elementary school. And I love my kids. I love my kids dearly. The other day, this photo showed up on Twitter. I hadn't seen it before until apparently a, uh, the Republican Party, or at least uh, fans of the Republican Party, fans of the current president, uh, decided that this was an acceptable line of attack to, to diminish Joe Biden, to, to lessen his candidacy and, and to maybe steal away some votes from him. And what they're saying is this is an absolutely inappropriate way of showing affection to your son, to your, to your child. It's Joe Biden. If you don't know, this is Joe Biden kissing his son, Hunter. For what it's worth, um, this is a father's dream to be able to hold their son like this. This is a son's dream to be held like this. I come from a family that we're not terribly affectionate. You know, we, we generally, half the time we express our love for one another with a grunt. And we all know what it means, so we're good. But as I'm getting older, I'm finding myself more and more leaning towards saying those words, I love you, and, and hugging my children whenever I get a chance. It's not creepy. It's an honest, sincere expression of how much I love them. It's me trying to show them that no matter what they go through in, my, in their life, this is how close I am. This is where I want to be. This is how protective I am. That for somebody to get to them, they've got to go through me. Right? Now, all the, those men out there that are saying, no, this is inappropriate, this isn't good, this is... Whatever, whatever it is, you th I can't even understand how this could possibly be a line of attack. We've all watched Field of Dreams. If you're a man out there who says, I've never watched Field of Dreams, or who says, I, I never cried at the end of Field of Dreams, you are a liar. We've all seen this movie. This movie is like, it's part of our DNA. And, I, I, and up until this photo, I used to love the ending of that movie. It broke my heart. I, I, I wept openly as, as, as the, the father and the son, yeah, and this is a spoiler alert, but as the father and the son uh, play ball, they have a catch together. Right? Kevin Costner, in, with, with, with broken words, he's, he's crying because he's so happy to see his dad who's come back. And he says, Dad... Would you like to have a catch? And yeah, son, I'd, I'd really like that. And they do, they have a catch. But you know the thing that I noticed today? They didn't say, I love you. They just played ball. I'm not saying they have to say, I love you to, to show that. But they actually, that scene is not just a wonderful scene of a, of a father and son connecting in a way they used to connect and connecting through something that means so much to both of them. That scene is actually a reminder of how truly repressed we are with our feelings. You have a kid. Don't hold back your love from them. You have friends. Don't hold back your love for them. Tell them how much they mean to you every day. Tell your children, show your children how much they mean to you every time you get a chance. Part of the 
thing that we're going through in this world is the fact that we don't see each other as truly precious. But if I can't show my son, if I can't show my daughter, if I can't show my friends that they are precious to me, in ways that can't be misunderstood, in ways that show them how vulnerable I am in that moment, how can I possibly show a stranger how precious they are to me in an appropriate way? If I can't tell the people closest to me how much they mean to me, if I can't show them how much they mean to me, because I'm afraid, well, I don't even know what it is that people are afraid of. But if I can't do that, there is no hope for me to show the world that I love it. There is no hope for me to show the people that I encounter that they are precious, not only in God's eyes, but in mine. I might be completely wrong about this. Maybe this photo, maybe this photo is showing us something that I'm not seeing. But to me, and Dad, I'm coming to see you next week. Be ready. You're getting a kiss. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And I pray that God will sh- provide you and offer you the peace of continu- continuously being in his presence. And I pray that you will allow yourself to be vulnerable to those you love. And you'll tell them. And you'll show them in no uncertain way. Amen.